questions cause I want to win. I decided to tool the knife sheath and I'd already went around and put a uh, barbed wire border around this and I figured I'd bring you guys on and show you this part of it too so what I'm gonna do on the front here is uh, put a feather right there and so Got a feather drawn here. What I need to do first is trace it on to some tracing paper. guys there's our traced out feather and this is called Grayson's feather because I drew this up for my son's knife sheath okay so next we need to get this onto here. And I'm gonna make sure this is gonna fit where I want it. Looks like it's gonna fit really good. Alright. So what we need to do first is we need to wet this leather. This is no, uh, what is known as casing the leather. You can, if you need it to hold moisture longer, you can wet the back side of this too. I do that if I'm going to be uh, tooling on it for a while. Okay. So now we want to let this kind of come back to its original color and and I'll feel it and if it doesn't feel like it's retaining enough moisture because ideally <clears throat> you want to get your moisture about halfway through the leather and that way when you're stamping or tooling you really bring out those dark oils that are inside the leather and uh, it makes your piece look a lot nicer. But if we're putting this on, just getting some damp, damp leather will work. This is a weight, and I've got a little stylus here, and I'm just going to lightly press on this to uh, transfer this design into the leather.
make sure we didn't miss any. Now I've got these little florals, these little fluffs down here. I've got them marked on here. I'm not going to mark them because I just hand tool those when, when I get to it. Oh, by the way, you guys like my paperweight? Back when I used to blow glass, this was one of the... I've got a lot of pieces, but this was one of my favorite ones because of this oblong top on here. Gave it some character. But works pretty good to hold things down. So, so all right, guys. There we go. Might be kind of hard for you guys to see. See if I can get the light. No, I don't think so. But you can kind of see there. So then, next what we'll do is... Uh, <clears throat> hey guys, sorry, my the memory card got full. So... In the process of uploading all that, I went ahead and sketched out another feather and some vines running through here with some little leaves here and there and a couple flowers up here and then a little flower bud there and looks like I forgot to uh, Put the flower bud on that one. So let you guys watch that. You can see when I get it wet. You can probably see that marks a lot better. that line a little bit and another thing I went around and did is marked a line all the way around up here I'm I'm not gonna really tool anything I might just basket weave that or something but up and did that and what that'll do is make this entire inside look like it's inside of this border running around the outside and so what I'll do next where I got left off in the other video is, is I'll get all this wet and then I'll come back with this swivel knife here and go down and cut all these lines. These are all the cuts that I've got to do. So I'll be back with you guys and uh, let you watch me cut this out. So, hey guys, so. I've got this wet and I'm letting it come back, letting it dry up a little bit. And so before you go to use this, every time before you go to use this, <clears throat> you need to prepare this edge and uh, strop it. And so you want to set this at the angle of the edge of the blade and pull straight back. Don't curve up like this straight back and flip it over do the other side flip it over do it about I don't know two three times each side 
each time before you go to use it. If you start to feel it wanting to drag a little bit or or catch, you need to, well, you can flip it over if you've stropped your blade and cut with the clean, the other clean side, but you'll want to restrop it again. And what this does is, uh, if you can imagine steel, it has teeth on it, and so when you sharpen a blade, you can kind of feel a burr on one side or the other. And what that's done when you sharpen the blade is it's bent some of those teeth over a little bit. And so when you strop this, you straighten those teeth back out. And these will be a lot sharper. And you can do this with uh, knives too. So I'm going to go ahead and strop this for you guys. And if you can see that color that's coming off there, this dirty color, that's actually steel that you're taking off of this blade. When you do this, First I'm going to go and do my, my border line. And when you run one of these you want to make sure you're straight up and down and you want to pull to you and you want it angled like this so you're only cutting with the back edge of it. You don't want to push real hard and cut all the way through. You just want to cut, <clears throat> you know, so far into the leather. And when you're doing curves, if you're curving out this way, you want to kind of rock this in a little bit. And you use these two fingers to steer this. And this one down here I use to help support and to help pull it. And then you just turn it. But if you're going out in a corner like this, you want to kind of rock inside a little bit. Same if you're doing this one. You want to rock on the inside of that, or lean just a little bit. If you keep it straight when you do those, you'll you'll cut them at an angle, and it'll actually cut under the leather. I need a lot of practice with one of these, but. And you'll want to look from the side because you can't really see what the blade's doing if you're looking straight back from this way. If you notice I stop and turn it around, come back from the other edge, or the other side, that just keeps me from accidentally cutting past into this leather back here.
Hey guys, so I thought I had hit record and I didn't, but I already got all this knifed in. And I may have to uh, let you go here in a little bit. And try to bring you back on here and there. And I. What, Jackie? What are you up to? Working? What are you up to? I'm a car. Oh, yeah. I got from McDonald's. From McDonald's, huh? Did you get it in a Happy Meal? All right, guys. Cutting is done.
she gets a better view. So, here's the bottom. You can see where I'd made a few mistakes that but those will tool out. So next comes beveling. I enjoy beveling, it's very tedious. I'll show you guys, here's, here's a textured beveler, if you look. It's kind of angled a little more on this side. Here's a smooth one. See that angle a little better on that. And then here's a bigger textured one. It's a real drastic beveler there. And then here's a uh, matching smaller one textured as well but for the next bit I'll be using one of those and this guy you can use any type of mallet what you don't want to do is use a metal hammer on this. You'll mushroom these. So you want to use poly, wood, or rawhide. You can use rubber. Um, I would think it would bounce back a little bit too much. So you wouldn't be getting as much energy into the leather. So, all right, guys, I'll be bringing you back here and there as I'm doing some beveling on this, and and uh, probably explain a few things, and, and probably start start with the feathers because they're the main. These two feathers here, and this big flower here, and this little scroll down here, <coughs> those are the main, main points of this. I guess this little one could be too. So you can see how that makes it have more depth to it compared to this one right here. I'll show you guys 
what this will look close to when it's done. It'll look something similar to this.